Good morning, Tracy. This is Mr. Wong. Today is the Monday, 20th of April. Um, so today there'll be two parts to the lesson. First part, we will be going through last week's activity 5.3, testing the properties of materials, where we test about the flexibility, uh, the allow whether it allows light to pass through and whether uh, it floats or sinks in water. So we'll be going through that for the first part. For the second part, we will move on to activity 5.4, where we'll be testing the uh, material, whether is it waterproof or not waterproof. All right, so let's get the first part started. This is last week's activity, activity 5.3, where you saw the video where I uh, bend the ruler, where I shine a torchlight through the material, and also I um, drop Two different objects into water to see whether they sink or they float. Okay, so let's compare the properties of the different materials and the different objects. So the first part is about flexibility. Let's highlight this. It's about flexibility. Okay, so uh, in the video, I had a plastic ruler. I had a wooden ruler. So um, of course, before the video, I asked you to do a prediction. So with some sensible common sense, involved you will realize that or you will know that basically a plastic ruler would be more flexible than a wooden ruler so for me because we have plastic rulers in our pencil case we know plastic rulers can bend very well uh, so plastic ruler should be the one that's more flexible so how are you supposed to do it okay this one of course you don't have the experience but uh you saw the video, so you should know about this. How do we find out whether something is more flexible or not? All I need to do is to pen it. Okay, I just need to pen the objects. Pen the pen the rulers. Okay, simple as that. Okay, so by bending rulers, I can see which one is more flexible and which one is less flexible. The one that can bend more is more flexible. The one that can bend less is less flexible. Okay, so maybe I just want to elaborate a bit more. Bend rulers. The ruler that can bend more. Okay, the ruler that can bend more is more flexible. Alright, so quite simple. So how do I test it? I just need to bend the rulers. The ruler that is that can bend more, that's definitely more flexible. Alright, so with that, let's go on to the next page. Okay, so of course, by right, it's supposed to, um, each of you is supposed to do it, but I mean, this is HBL, so I will show it to you. So what happens is, we realize that from the video that the plastic ruler bends more than the wooden ruler, so it is more flexible. Okay, so based on conclusion, I mean, for this part, I, I allow you to either write the material or the object itself, so you can either write the plastic or you can write the plastic ruler. Yeah, the plastic or the plastic ruler is more flexible than the wood or wooden ruler. Right, so that is the part for flexibility. So the fact that I can bend the plastic ruler more means it is more flexible than the wooden ruler. Alright, so next one. Which object allows light to pass through? So I have a clear plastic sheet. I have a ceramic towel and um, I ask you to predict which one is uh, which will allow light to pass through so obviously you can see through the plastic sheet so basically the clear plastic sheet is the one that uh, allows light to pass through okay so how do I what do I need to do to what do I need to do to find out whether which one allows light to pass through there are many ways I'm gonna write both ways um, so from your answers, I saw that some of you say I can shine a torchlight through the material, through the object. Shine a torchlight through the object and see if the light passes through it. That's number one. So one way I can do that. Okay. What I can also do, I can also um raise the object okay uh, to some of you said something like uh, you raise it up so as to block the sun so if you can see the sun means it is 
uh, allows light to pass through. If we can see the sun means it blocks the sunlight from passing through means it doesn't allow light to pass through. So for this case, I will say uh, raised object against the sun, against the light source. Okay, so this is two ways. Okay, let me just put it properly so you can see it. Something like that. Okay, can. So first way, you can either shine a torchlight through the object, which is what I did for my activity. Other than that, you can actually raise the object against a light source. If you can see the light coming through the object, means it allows light to pass through. If you raise the object against the light source and you can't see it, can't see the light source, means that um the object is actually blocking the light from passing through it. So these two are these two are the two ways you can do it. But for this experiment, we are using uh method number one. We shine a torchlight through the object. All right. So um. Again, you're supposed to do this, each of you supposed to do this, but uh, it's HBL, so only I'm doing it. So which one allows light to pass through it? It is actually the clear plastic sheet. Okay, and based on observation, which one allows light to pass through? It is your plastic or your clear plastic sheet. And which one doesn't? Ceramic or ceramic towel. Okay, then you will ask teacher why sometimes you can write ceramic and sometimes you can write ceramic towel or sometimes you can write the material and sometimes you can write the object um it depends on how you phrase the sentence you realize that over here i use the word the okay the the means the object okay we can conclude that the clear plastic sheet allows it to pass through but the ceramic towel doesn't because it's referring to the object per se when i use the word the okay but if i never use the word the I, we can conclude that Plastic allows it to pass through, but ceramic does not. Okay, without the the, it can refer to the material also. So the fact that they have a the there, this the and this the, uh, makes you feel that they might be asking for the object as well. But it's not wrong to write the material. All right. So for the last one, which one floats and sinks in water? So I got a polystyrene ball, which is the styrofoam ball that you saw in the glass marble. Obviously, um, the styrofoam ball will or the polystyrene ball will float. So answer is polystyrene. However, for this one, there's uh, quite a big misconception that you guys have. A lot of you think that because the polystyrene ball is lighter, the glass ball is heavier, that's why the glass ball sinks. Alright, whether something sinks or whether something floats does not depend on uh, how heavy or how light it is. Imagine a cruise ship, a ship. A ship is definitely heavy, it's made of metal, but a ship floats on water. Okay, so it's not something that has to do with weight of course there's something to do with a bit of mass but um there's a whole lot of equations behind physics involved that you will learn in secondary school okay so um whether something floats whether something sinks is not exactly dependent on the weight doesn't mean it's heavy it means it can sink a very good example is your ship a ship is heavy a ship floats that's why it can sail right so um please don't tell me things like it is heavy, that's why it sinks, it is light, so it's, that's why it can float. Light things can also sink. Okay, it depends. It depends. Alright, so um how am I gonna test it out? So once again, how am I gonna test out whether something floats, something sinks? All I need to do is to put them in a basin of water, which is what we did um for the activity. Okay, so once again, whether something floats, something sinks, it's not whether they are heavy or not. It has to do with more than just the weight or the mass of the object. Okay, it also has to do with the volume of the object that it occupies, okay, which is quite a bit more difficult for you to understand at this point of time. Okay, so um, how do you gonna test it? Put them in a basin of water. So for the next part, so this is quite straightforward. You saw the video, you realize that the polystyrene ball which is the styrofoam ball, it actually floats and the glass ball actually sinks. Okay, so from our observations, from we can conclude that the polystyrene ball floats on water but the marble, but the glass marble sinks. Okay, or in this case the glass.
Okay, so they ask you why must you repeat between the group members? Some of you tell me very funny answers like uh, so that everyone has a chance, so that uh yeah, so that everyone has a chance. Okay. Well, for teamwork, yeah, that's the answer. But uh, for scientific reason, why must you repeat every test? I have a very good answer from uh I think maybe in history. You uh, one of you told me like um because to to see whether to make sure that okay, to make sure that the results are reliable. Okay, what we mean by reliable? Let me explain. Okay, um, so why must you repeat a test over and over again? It's because you want to test whether, you want to see whether the results you get, is it um, reliable or not. What I mean by reliable means it doesn't matter who does it, whoever does it will get the same results. Then you can be sure that the result uh, is reliable. Um, it might not be correct, it might not be wrong. Okay, uh, it depends. Okay, but we repeat, the, we repeat the experiment over and over again is to make sure that whatever we get, Every time we do it, we get the same thing. This is what we call getting reliable results. Sometimes you might not eat, the reliable result might not be the correct answer. Most of the time it should be, but sometimes reliable result doesn't mean it is correct. But reliable result means no matter who does it, the result is the same. So I know it's not because of me that uh, have this result. Everyone has this result. Okay, doesn't mean it's correct, doesn't mean it's wrong. Just that everyone who does the same step for the same thing. Gets the same result, and and that's what we call reliable. Okay, so it doesn't matter if someone from Japan does it, doesn't matter if someone from China does it, whoever does it will get the same result, and that's what we call reliable. All right. So this is activity five point three. Today we will look at um the property property of waterproof, and we'll do activity five point four, which is is it waterproof? In the next part of the lesson. See you later.